Hi, I'm Ned, and I make games. Today I'm returning to my grass shader to show you several improvements. I want a field full of grass, and in order to achieve that, there are a few optimizations to make. First, I'll convert the shader to use a compute shader instead of a geometry function. Compute shaders are much faster and supported by more platforms. I'll also implement LOD, or level of detail, making the mesh dynamically simplify the farther from the camera. I would highly recommend you watch the previous video in my grass series, since I'll be reusing a lot of code. Also, if you're unfamiliar with compute shaders, watch my introduction to compute shaders video to get a handle on them. I won't spend much time explaining how they work here. Both videos are linked in the corner and the video description. I created this project using Unity 2020.1.14 F1 and Universal Render Pipeline 8.2.0. If you're using a newer version, check the comments for updates. So, at the moment, the grass shader uses a geometry function to generate extra geometry on top of a model. Unfortunately, geometry functions are not supported on Apple platforms. Not to mention, they're generally unoptimized. I want a ton of grass on the screen, so the best thing to do is replace that with something more efficient, like a compute shader. We'll use one to generate the grass layers, and then feed them into a vertex fragment shader, which will do the clipping and coloring. Let's get started by creating a hello world sort of setup, where we re-render the source mesh. First, of course, set up the URP by downloading the package, creating a settings asset, and enabling it in your project. Then, create a compute shader called grass layers. Open it in your script editor. A lot of this will look familiar to the introductory compute shader, so in the interest of time, I won't linger too long here. First, declare a main kernel, create the data structures we'll be using, and their corresponding buffers. We want to receive two buffers which describe the source mesh. The vertex buffer holds vertex data, such as position, and the triangle buffer holds indices into the vertex buffer, such that three consecutive entries describe a triangle. Next, write the output draw vertex and triangle structures. Since points on the triangle share layer height, we can store it in draw triangle to save some memory. Create the append buffer to store generated geometry, and write a couple of variables to define the number of source triangles and the local to world matrix. In the kernel, let's start with 128 group size. We can adjust it later if we need to. In the main method, return if the thread ID is greater than the number of triangles. Then, get the source vertices of this triangle and convert them to draw vertices using make base draw vertex. This function converts the data from local to world space. Next, create a draw triangle and store the vertices in it. Set height to zero for now. Finally, append the new triangle. Return to the scene editor. The next step in our render chain is the triangle count to vertex count compute shader. First, create a new compute shader called tricount to vertex count. We've got to use this since the grass compute shader outputs the number of triangles, but the graphic shader needs the number of vertices. The code inside is really simple. It just multiplies the value in the indirect arguments buffer by three, fixing the problem. Return to the scene editor and ready your graphic shader files. I'll be building off of last video's shader, so make sure you have a grass layers dot shader grasslayers.hlsl, and nmg grasslayers.helpers.hlsl files. You can find each in the video description if you've lost them. The helper file contains some useful functions for the graphic shader. Open the .shader file. In the properties, delete the grass height entry. Then, in the lit pass, delete the required geometry pragma, and up the target to 5.0, since we're going to use a compute buffer. Also, remove the pragma geometry geometry line. Do the same in the shadow caster pass. In the HLSL file, remove the grass layer's constant definition. Then, replace the data structures with these. The draw vertex and triangle are copied from the compute shader. Don't forget to change the draw triangle's buffer to a structured buffer, so we can read it like an array. The vertex output must now hold all information for the fragment function. Do note, I renamed UV to UV and height, just to be clearer about what it holds inside. In the properties variables, delete the total height line. The vertex function needs a rewrite. First, change the argument to a vertex ID, 
Then get the triangle on vertex for this call, just like we did in the introductory compute shader example. Now pass the position and normal, construct the UV and height value, and compute the clip space position with this handy function. Delete the entire geometry function section. Bye bye The fragment function is mostly the same. It gets its data from vertex output struct now. I also simplified the UV handling a bit, again just to be clearer. Alright, now let's make the c -sharp renderer class. Create a new c -sharp script called Procedural Grass Renderer. It will look very similar as well. First, set up some fields for the source mesh, grass compute shader, triangle to vertex count compute shader, and material. Then define a source vertex structure containing position, normal, and UV. Write instance variables for an initialized state boolean, compute buffer pointers for the source vertex, source triangle, draw triangle, and indirect argument buffers, IDs for the grass and count fixer kernels, the dispatch size, and the local bounds. Next, calculate the strides for each of the compute buffers. The draw triangle struct has one common float and then eight floats in each of its vertices. In on enable, first ensure things are cleaned up, then gather data from the source mesh and calculate its number of triangles. Instantiate and initialize the four buffers. For now, the size of the draw buffer is just the number of triangles in the source mesh. Get the kernel IDs for the two kernels we'll be using. Set the buffers and number of triangles in the grass compute shader, the argument buffer in the count fixer compute shader, and the draw buffer in the material. Finally, calculate the number of thread groups needed to cover all source triangles, and cache the local mesh bounds. In on disable, release all buffers. In late update, set the draw buffers counter to zero to clear it. Then convert the bounds to world space using this function. Set the local to world matrix on the grass compute buffer and dispatch its main kernel. Copy the draw buffers count into the indirect argument buffer and dispatch the triangle to vertex count compute shader to multiply that count by three. Finally, call graphics.drawproceduralindirect to draw the mesh. Note, I opted to turn off shadows since I think they make the grass look worse. Your call though. Back in the scene editor, create an empty game object and add the grass renderer script. Create a material using the grass layer shader. Fill in the settings for both to your liking and press play. Everything looks good so far. Let's add layers back in. Open the grass compute file. Add variables for the total height and the maximum number of layers. In the main kernel, wrap the triangle creating code in a loop that executes once per layer. We need to calculate the height percentage for this layer now. I found it's useful to separate the physical height and the height used in the clipping algorithm. The reason is that if the clipping texture height is ever one, that layer would never be visible. This math makes sure it never quite reaches one. Set the clipping height in the triangle, pass the input vertex and the position height to the extrude vertex function, which now calculates a new position for this vertex by moving it along its normal vector, scaled by the layer height. Now open the C-sharp renderer and create a serializable class to hold grass settings and a corresponding field. In on enable, since we're generating more triangles now, one for each layer in fact, set the draw buffer's length accordingly. Then set the max layers and total height variables from the settings object. Adding layers increases the bounds of the mesh, so expand it by the grass's height. Re-enter the scene editor and set your number of layers and height values. Press play and voila, that looks familiar. Now that we've got a working solution, it would be nice to adjust it in edit mode. Open the C-sharp renderer and add this attribute. It tells Unity to run this script even in edit mode. Now, to refresh the shaders when settings change, add this little trick to late update. Don't worry, in edit mode, update isn't called every frame, so this won't slow things down much. Okay, that's easier to work with. Now, let's build a field of grass. Set your renderer to use Unity's flat plane mesh and duplicate the grass object. Here, we run into the first problem. Both renderers don't draw. It's because the renderers share the same compute shader and material instances. When you set the buffer variables inside renderer number two, it overwrites the buffers set by renderer number one. The simplest way to fix this problem is to copy the compute shader and material objects by instantiating them in on enable. 
storing them in new instance variables. Throughout on enable and late update, replace references to them all with their instantiated copies. In on disable, destroy the copies. Note that you have to call slightly different versions depending on if Unity's in play mode or edit mode, which we check here. Now that there's two patches of grass, we can see that they don't tile very well. It would be nice if the noise UV was decided by world position instead of the mesh UV. Let's add an option to do that. In the grass compute shader, add this pragma to tell the compiler we'll be using a keyword. Next, add a variable to scale the world position. Then, in make base draw vertex, add these lines to calculate a UV based on the X and Z world space position coordinates, but only if the keyword is enabled. In the C-sharp renderer, add two grass settings to turn on this option, and set the UV scale. Then, in onEnable, set the scale variable and optionally enable the keyword. Test out those changes in Unity. I'd say that looks better. Now let's try to create a bunch of grass planes. Well, it looks good, but my frame rate's pretty bad. What if grass farther away had less layers? That would significantly improve performance, and we'd already have the tools to do it with our compute shader. This technique, called LOD, or level of detail, involves simplifying things far from the player's notice, and it's a powerful tool to use. To get started, open the compute shader. At far distances, the most important thing is the color of the grass, so I want to control that closely. Add a second height value to the triangle, the Y component will be the lerp value used to calculate grass color in the graphics shader. Next, add several variables related to LOD. A minimum distance from the camera, where the layer reduction begins. A maximum distance, where the maximum layer reduction takes effect. A factor, controlling the falloff between the minimum and maximum. And a camera position in world space. Write a function to calculate the number of layers for a triangle. First, calculate the distance from each point to the camera, then pick the minimum distance. Use smooth step to transform the distance into a lerp value, where d is 1 at the minimum distance and 0 at the maximum. Then apply the LOD factor and multiply the lerp value with the maximum number of layers. Of course, make sure there's always at least one layer. In the kernel function, call getNumLayers. Now, calculate the height lerp value. We want the color to trend towards the average, as there's fewer layers. This algorithm accomplishes that by applying an offset that's larger as the number of layers shrinks. Finally, store the color lerp in the heights field. Open the graphics shader HLSL file. Change the draw triangle struct to match the version in the compute shader. Then, in vertex output, change the UV and height to a float 4. In the vertex function, be sure to change this line to use a float 4 as well. In the fragment function, use the UV and height W component as the lerp value for albedo. In the C-sharp renderer, add settings for the minimum and maximum camera distance, as well as the LOD factor. Don't forget to adjust the draw buffer stride to account for this new float value. In unenable, pass the LOD settings to the shader. Finally, in late update, set the camera position variable. Back in the scene editor, set values for the grass LOD settings, then drag the renderer object to the asset window to turn it into a prefab. That's for easier copying. Create a large patchwork field of grass to test everything out. Looks good and much more efficient. Of course, there's always more you could do to improve the grass, both aesthetically and mechanically, but I'm pretty happy to move on for now. I have another style of grass to show off. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the video about it. Thanks a lot for watching. I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like. It lets YouTube know to recommend this video and it really helps out the channel. Also, feel free to post a comment if you have any questions. I do have one for you. How do you plan to use grass in your projects? Is there a topic you'd like to see a video about? Thanks again for watching and make games.